What's up, guys? It's the phenomenal AJ Styles. You're listening to the Two Man Power Trip. Oh my God! This is Joey Styles, and you're listening to the Two Man Power Trip podcast. This is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. This is Cody Rhodes, the Prince of Pro Wrestling, and you are listening to Two Man Power Trip. This is Jimmy Van the Boogie Woogie Man. Tell my people and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare miss John and Chad. Hey, everybody out there. This is the franchise Shane Douglas. Remember me? <laughs> well, guys, it's great to be on the show again. I appreciate you asking me back. So you said you were going to pinch yourself. I didn't know it was that kind of show now. I mean, if you guys are in the privacy of your own home, if you want to do these things. Good. How you doing, Chad? Hey, Johnny. Cool, man. What's going on? We're ready to go or what? Okay. Hey, man. What's up, guys? This is Homicide. Oh, that's my homie. Homicide with a big homie club. Yeah, that would be it. Hey, this is David Penzer, and this is the two-man power trip of wrestling. Well, thank you, thank you. Hear me, fear me. I don't do many wrestling shows anymore, probably because I'm a bit ignorant. You guys probably know ten times more than I do. Look, Mean Gene, I can't be beat. I'm the greatest of all time. And I would say that. And every kid, I, they knew they could kick the out of me. Great talking to you guys. It's been your pleasure. <laughs> They've worked in and around the wrestling business. They've studied thousands of hours of wrestling, and now they bring to you the greatest legends, Hall of Famers, creative minds, and both current and future stars of pro wrestling. They are Primetime Pod and Chad, the two men power trip. Episode of the Two Man Power Trip of Wrestling is brought to you by our new sponsor, Skills. Stay tuned in just a few minutes as we will tell you all about a new way to win some money by playing games directly on your phone with dozens of choices to choose from. You've either got skills or you don't. So stick around for a little bit. We'll give you a little bit more information on that. 
obviously this is John Puzz, and as we're starting off episode 250, a little bit different than we normally do. Obviously, you normally hear Chad kicking off the show, and right now Chad sounds like pure death, and he is out of commission. But hey, the show must go on like they say in the wrestling business. And this show is episode number 250, and it must go on because it is a biggie, a monumental, an epic episode 250 as we bring our guest to you. And he is none other than, none other than the bodyguard Virgil. You also may know him as Vincent in the NWO. Man, this is, I mean, where do I start off with him? There's so much kind of to, to delve into and so much to talk about in this great great interview that we conducted he is a ton of fun i mean i tell you what we first of all i mean we shed some light on this lonely virgil thing kind of get that out of the way and it's really kind of gone by the wayside you now have this olive garden stuff this meat sauce mafia stuff this kind of you know the real virgil quote unquote getting a new gimmick and getting a new lease on life and kind of changing it up a bit loved his gofundme page which we talked about for a little bit um the the million dollar gofundme page where he basically says hey i want to be the real million dollar man so if you haven't seen that and if you care to donate some money go to the gofundme page and check that out it's kind of more of of, of a jokey thing but i like it and i kind of like the general direction of what he's you know doing what he's accomplishing and where he's going with this kind of new quote-unquote gimmick so it's awesome to talk to Virgil and who else better to talk to on episode 250 than Virgil he kind of hits the the major points in the wrestling business if you think about it the WWF doing its golden era and WCW doing the NWO era and you first of all let's just start with the WWF and being the bodyguard to the million dollar man Ted DiBiase which is one of the greatest gimmicks of all time and obviously Virgil being a bit of a playoff of Dusty Rhodes real name and kind of a bit of a playoff of Dusty himself but you know we go into the bodyguard gimmick we go all deep into it and we talk about Andre the Giant as well because obviously he spent a lot of time with Andre and a lot of time at the top of the card whether being involved in main events or being on the outside of the ring for big time main events Obviously, Hulk Hogan played a big part in his career. Macho Man Randy Savage. You know, we, we go on and on. We kind of hit the points and we delve into these big-time guys that played a huge role in his career. Obviously, Ted. Obviously, Andre. Obviously, the rowdy one. Rowdy Roddy Piper. And when Virgil turns face, it's just one of those epic moments where you just don't forget it. I mean, it was just awesome when he turned face and turned on Ted DiBiase. And he hit him with that million dollar belt. And he got an awesome feud out of that. The fans were so invested. I know me and Chad were definitely invested as fans into that feud. You throw the rowdy one himself, Roddy Piper, right in the middle of it. And boom, Virgil is one of the top dogs, one of the lead faces. I mean, basically upper mid-card, top face for the company for a little bit while he was feuding with Ted. And obviously he ends up winning the million dollar championship and they have a quite a run and quite a feud going back and forth with the million dollar title so we go all into that that was a lot a lot of fun and very memorable obviously you know it's our wheelhouse and it's the golden era of the wbf so very memorable not just us but to pretty much anybody who considers himself a good wrestling fan so of course then you know you got to talk about wcw got to talk about the nwo where he played a bit of a different character he was the head of security vincent I'm sure everyone remembers that i mean we we go into the whole thing with the nwo crossing paths with hogan again what did hogan's kind of involvement if you will in bringing in vincent to wcw obviously the vincent name being another play off of someone else this time and being a play off of vincent kennedy mcmahon who obviously everyone knows you know, it was quite a little bit of a rib there, so pretty funny. But we do, we get into Hall, Nash, Six, Eric Bischoff, all of the NWO. We talk about how, quite frankly, the crowds were then, the impact of the NWO, the fact that they were just taking over at that point, and what it was like to kind of just be thrown into the middle of that and be in the midst of the NWO, because it wasn't just that he was, oh, the NWO, and kind of when it got watered down and it was the B team. He really played an integral part when they were at their hottest and they brought him in and he was mixed into the chemistry with Hogan, Six, Hall, Nash, Bischoff, DiBiase, etc. So, I mean, he was right there in the thick of it and he was right there being involved again in some 
huge main events and in some huge main events involving Hulk Hogan. So anybody that kind of rips Virgil or has anything negative to say about him, you know, you can't re I mean, you can in, a, in one aspect because I'm sure everyone has their different opinions and I'm sure people have seen the Joe Dombrowski documentary and, and things of that nature. But you really got to look at his career and say, man, this guy was right there smack dab in the middle of some huge monumental angles and you know of course for us i mean we throw you right down you know into some huge monumental shows of ours and that would be number 250 so just some great stuff there and of course we had to ask him about some topical wrestling stuff because if anybody follows his twitter you saw he was backstage with anderson and gallows not too long ago what was that all about what does he think about current wrestling yeah i don't want to stick you know stick around and listen to that that is some good stuff and he has some really good opinions on john cena that i quite frankly agree with 110 percent you're going to want to listen to that so that is some really really good stuff and before we send it off to tmpt business just want to say that this episode is brought to you by skills skills lets you play the mobile games you love and you can win real cash prizes join over 50,000 users that have won a hundred dollars or more download your favorite game at skills.com slash power and start winning cash prizes by playing games on your phone or or tablet. Just remember, when you make a deposit, use the promo code POWER, P-O-W-E-R, capitalize that for an extra $10. Just go to skills.com, that is skills with a Z, skills.com slash power, and we just want to thank them one more time for sponsoring this monumental episode number 250 of the two-man power trip of wrestling, and stay tuned, folks. Because episode 251 and going on forward is going to be huge, epic stuff. Stay tuned for the two-man power trip of wrestling, and I'll send it over to some TMPT business. And now for some TMPT business. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Two Man Power Trip and at Wrestling Pal. Please visit our website, tmptofwrestling.com. That is tmptofwrestling.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also subscribe to us on iTunes. While you're on iTunes, check out the feed for some legendary episodes featuring the living legend himself, Bruno San Martino, the late great American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Ray Mysterio Jr., Jeffrey McDivitt, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Mr. Wonderful Paul Owner, AJ Styles, and so many others. Also, while you're surfing the web, check out WrestlingInc.com. Yes, that is WrestlingInc.com. They are the number one wrestling news source out there, so please check them out. Also, while on the internet, go to ProWrestlingTees.com. Yes, ProWrestlingTees.com is your superstore. If you are a super fan, and you can please check out our page while you're there, you can check out Tito Santana, Paul Orndorff, Coco Beware, Magnum TA, Buff Bagwell, and so, so many others. Follow along with the two-man power trip of wrestling in 2017 as we hit the road and we come to a town near you. April 22nd, we hit Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the Icon Collector's Fest. Then, May 19th and May 20th, we hit the Mid-Atlantic Wrestling Expo in Richmond, Virginia. Then, follow us to New Jersey as we hit the Legends of the Ring in Monroe. So please follow along with the two-man power trip of wrestling in 2017, because you never know where we may land. And now, without any further ado... He is a former AWA Southern Tag Team Champion. He is a former WWF Million Dollar Champion. He is a WWF Superstar, a former NWO member. He is a wrestling icon. He is Virgil. Please enjoy.
<laughs> yeah, I'm here, Virgil. How you doing tonight, oh, bud? Just laying back, huh? Yeah, just hanging out, man. This is great. We uh, we appreciate you, you know, syncing up. We're uh, we definitely we put you in one of those buckets that we have. We call it the bucket list. So uh, it's really awesome A to have you list. on tonight. Hey, that's some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, I mean, the thing with us, and I mean, we'll just kind of, we'll casually get into it here, but, you know, uh, the thing with us is we love to talk to the guys from our era, so obviously our yeah. era is what we still recognize as the era, so obviously that's the bucket list, so, uh, yeah, it's really awesome to have you on, I hope you're, uh, I hope you're just as happy as we are. Hey, man, we have the best era in the history of wrestling, okay, the best era, because I went from one great gimmick, okay, to another super gimmick, okay? So I like I went from Superman to Batman. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Me and Ted came in, we came in the period, we came in we did a whole million dollar man thing, okay? Okay, that was a that was a the Batman episode. And then we came back to a new episode which was the Superman es- uh episode. It was the N W O the New World Order, okay? That took wrestling to a whole different level. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And just, uh, I want to just be a little formal before we continue, though. I just want to say that joining us on the line tonight, this is always key to the guest's, uh, you know, listening ability here, is the one and only, and it's not mistaken, you hear it in the voice, Joining us for it's going to be our 250th episode is the one and only Virgil. Thank you so much for joining us. So let's get into this. The two eras, the 80s, the 90s, one guy was there for both parts of the boom. The beginning part in the 80s, and then he watched it take off like another rocket in the 90s, and that is Virgil. But Virgil, why is it that we do love that era so much and we look back on it more than we would watch anything going on right now on Monday Night Raw? Hey, man, we took off like... The 747, okay? Okay. Well, we shot off the rocket, but nothing was better than the first episode. It was Raw, the WWF program, held on Monday night. Okay? And they, on WCW, held a program, Nitro, on Monday night. Now, how can Monday night football compete with that? It couldn't. Monday Night Football made an offer to the WWF and to WCW. Can you please, please go to another night other than Monday Night? And they both shot the NFL down. They said, nope, we're going to run Monday Night. Okay, that's how powerful that Raw was getting and... Nitro was getting. I mean, what could the NFL? The NFL couldn't battle with it, man. People in the ages of let's see, about six years old to a hundred and six years old were watching and taping wrestling. You know that? Oh yeah, taping it, watching it over and over again, and still. You know, like I said, watching it over and over again, we love it. We can't get enough of it. But it's, you know, it's something that I we grew up with everybody. We watched everybody come from Vince's TV over to WCW. And then by the time everybody hit WCW, you know, wrestling was cool again. So the, the good guys were the villains. The villains were cool. But I think Virgil kind of always sit right in the middle. Virgil or Vincent, he was always uh, in the middle of the cool storylines, what was going on. But... When uh, when you did make that jump, let's just start with the NWO. What was uh, what was going through your head when you showed up on Monday Nitro for the first time? Hey, what, what I I remember, it was Hulk. It was Hulk's action. Hulk was the main man in WCW. Okay, he brought all the characters in. Okay, he brought Ted and myself in. We were like number fifth and sixth. No, 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 let me take that back. We were number fourth and fifth coming in because Hulk was number one, okay? Nash was number two. Hall was number three. Ted DiBiase was number four. I was number five. And X-Pac was number six, okay? We made a whole change. 
to the whole WCW program, we brought a segment in called the New World Order on Nitro. People were going cuckoo off of it. They were going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs off of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right or wrong. Okay, we brought a whole new thing in wrestling, just like we brought to the WCW, and it was called the New World Order. We took one of the greatest stars they had there, remember Sting, am I correct? We had Sting hanging in the in the rafters, like he was like an eagle flying high over the whole program, checking out the whole program, you know what I mean? And Sting was one of the big, big, big um, men in WCW. Am I right or am I wrong? You're right. You're right. You're right. And then we brought in all the other greats that were here. The legendary Ric Flair. Okay? We brought our announcers came in. The announcers came from the WWF to WCW. There's no announcers no better than Bobby Heenan. There's no announcers better than Gene Okerlund. Where did they end up at? WCW. Am I right or am I wrong? Uh, you're right. But it's weird that that came to the South when that's all the Northern, you know, the New York Territory, New York this, New York that, but coming to the South, you know, did the Southern fans, did they take to the NWO right, right off the bat? Like, hey, I'm from New Jersey. I love the NWO because these are the guys that I grew up watching. Hey, they love the NWO so much, man. I mean, I remember we went up to the zoo shows. They ate it up. We went to Halifax, Nova Scotia, to do shows. Guess what? They chewed it up and swallowed it like it was the hottest hot sausage you ever ate in your life. Okay, we went to Seattle. We went all the way down to Dallas, Texas, and they were loving it. We went to San Francisco. We went to Hawaii, and they chewed it up. And guess what? We went all the way over to London, England. And they were eating it like it was a hot dog on the 4th of July. (laughs) You see where I'm coming from? I do. I do. Okay. All right. And people loved it. They loved it so much. They want more, more, more. Man, they used to be there with two TVs. One with WWF on it saying WWF Raw, the other one saying WCW Nitro. People were watching so much, the NFL was watching it. Major League Baseball was watching it. And guess what? Major League Football was watching it. I have football players come to me, hey man, first, we'd be watching you in the WWF or we'd be watching in WCW and we'd be in getting our ankles taped or wrist taped or elbows getting massages getting ready for the games and we'd be watching the WWF or WCW I heard the same thing from basketball players okay and guess what I heard the same thing from baseball players unbelievable it's unbelievable when you put that shirt on that black and white shirt I mean it's like it transformed everybody the shirt that for us okay like the top six, like Hogan, Hall, Nash, Ted, myself, X-Pac. Then we put that shirt on. The people went berserk. They love it. But still today, when that shirt's on, say if I wear that shirt and I'm going through an airport, or I got I got a sweatshirt with the NWO on, and you're going through an airport, you're walking down the street, and guys be like peeping on the shirt saying, yo, new world order. Oh, shit, yeah, man. You mind if I get a picture with you, you man? That that was magical. That was like that was like wearing a Super Bowl jersey on there. You mean from your some from like whoever's gonna win this year's Super Bowl, like like New England or like Atlanta. You like you having the, the Super Bowl shirt on and you're wearing it around wearing around town. They see it, man. They it brought back memories to it. People still today, man, they copy that shirt. I mean. You see copies of it. I seen one, a guy had a copy of it. I was in Chicago. It hit um, whatever his little thing was. I think it was a restaurant he had. It was um, really good food. It was RGF. And it looked just like the NWO shirt. 
it was in black and white, but it said R, really, G, F. It was, you know, R, G, F. It was really good food, okay? But it looked like the NWO shirt. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. Yeah. And people, everyone tried to just deal with the patterns. And he, we used to do the two sweet thing with the fingers up, you know, the two... The, the two index fingers down and the two outer fingers up like that, and your finger wrapping with the finger is down, your thumb is wrapping onto it. People do that, man. We we were like the Bruno Mars going on on stage, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And we we socked it to people, and people loved it, and we just sucked it on in and kept on giving more, 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 and they loved it. They loved it. We should have we should have been at the Super Bowl halftime show, and I bet if we would have got over so big, it would have went, it would made history. Oh, my God. Can you imagine that? The NWO taking on, like, Sting and Luger in the middle of uh, of the halftime show, you know, in the mid-'90s. But, you know, you talk about the Hulkster, and obviously it's made a huge impact on changing WCW, but what did it mean to have Hogan on your side Back through the WWF, but into WCW. Like, what, was, what did it mean to have Hogan being one of those guys that wanted to bring you in to WCW? Oh man, Hulk was one of the greatest guys out, man. Such a such a good friend and such a cool guy, man. Such a cool guy. And when he made the offer to bring Ted and myself in, man, I was doing backflips and I said, man, let's roll with it and let's go with it. I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? And and he's such a great leader, man. He just shows you how the, I mean, you just feel the electricity coming off him, and you were just like a like an extension cord. <laughs> you just shake it and shake, rattle and roll. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. He, he brings it right in, man, and and it just rotates right into you, you know, man. I mean, I wish we could have did a uh, a halftime entertainment. I bet we would have rocked it way better than. Bruno Mars, um, uh, what's the other one's name? Um, the, uh, they, they're out of England. Um, I'm trying to think this one group out of England. Well, let's say the other group, the Beatles, okay? We would have been just like the Beatles. <laughs> you can't beat that, can you? Hell no. No. You think Beyonce Definitely. put her show on? This is the NWO. We would have put a show on, and we were at 150,000 people, or 115,000, whatever the stadium receipt, and about 300 million worldwide saying, New World Order. Too sweet for life. You see where I'm coming from? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they would have been loving us. Loving us. People wouldn't even know. I mean, little kids would have been still in the mama's womb. Would have been saying, coming out, the first word they would have said, it would have been goo goo or mommy or dad dad. It would have been N-W-O. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. Not new world baby, new world order. You see more coming? Yes. We brought a whole different line. I bet, I bet they were like, uh, high school and junior high students and even grade school students were coming up doing the NWO signs in school. You know what I mean? We made a Definitely. big difference. Not only to, like, from parents, I mean, all the way down to kids coming up in, in, from kindergarten to first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, all the way to high school, all the way to college. We should have been the teachers in the game because we taught them. We taught them in Raw. We taught them in in, uh, WCW. And obviously, you know, with the NWO, you made a transition from the WF to WCW. You were Virgil, the body, or you were Vincent, the head of NWO security. And obviously, you said Bischoff and Hogan, you know, they bring you in. But what was it like? Was it an adjustment period going from WWF to WWF at that point, and kind of being, you know, becoming the "quote unquote" Vincent? I mean, the, the name, the name Virgil was trademarked by the WWF or WWE. Okay, the name Vincent was 
in with WCW. So why not? You keep on rolling, man. Keep on going. It's just like being traded from the Pittsburgh Steelers, okay, to the New York Giants, okay, or being traded from the New York Giants to San Francisco 49ers, okay? You just got to keep on, just pick up, pick up the sticks and keep on moving. You know what I mean? You got to keep on rolling. What are you supposed to do? Lay back and break your tears down and cry? It's being like traded from Team A to Team B. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yes. You got still. Did you mind you not? Uh, did you mind not wrestling as often? I mean, you wrestled Starkey '97, obviously in World War Three, and sporadically here and there. But did you mind kind of that bodyguard role, not wrestling as often? I mean, I mean, it didn't make no difference, man. Like you, you really, you really learning everything, all the aspects of everything in there, man. So when you do get in the ring, you're ready to rumble in the jungle. You know what I'm talking about? Because just many people dislike you by being the bodyguard as you can be in the ring, okay? And you can put a stern look on these people's faces and look at them, and they you you can bring you can bring the real uh, nastiness out of them. You can make them say words that. They didn't mean to say. It just came out their mouth. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. They can look at you and say, oh, I hate that. I hate that mother. But the, the deep inside of them, they say, man, I really kind of like him a little bit. He got that thing about him. You know what I mean? So I know how to, I know how to rock a crowd, man. And I could, I could do it in WWF. And then when I came to WCW, it was just even more to just rock them a whole different way. And when you rock them a different way, they come out a different way. I mean, we, we were down like in different towns that that the, that the WWF didn't go to, okay? We went to all them towns with WCW, okay? They already had a lock-in all over Virginia, um, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, okay? Okay, but now we're taking them to a whole different, there's different action. We're going to the state of Washington, the state of California, okay? The state of uh, Arizona, the state of Nevada, the state of Montana, okay? We're going to a whole new level now. And even going to the state of Texas, you mean? We were in Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, and we put the NW fans up. And man, you all see the Dallas Cowboys down there. When we went down there, man, they were like, like not the hook'em horns no more. It's a two sweet sign signs. You know what I'm talking about? Hmm. Yeah. So you see, Definitely. we made a big, we made a big difference. We made a big difference in Dallas Cowboys. You know what I mean? The American team. Okay. Or we should be the NWO should be called the American Dream. See where I'm at? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I and have... speaking, of the, speaking of the American Dream, though, you know, the Virgil character, obviously, they say is, you know, Virgil Runnels, like Dusty Rhodes' yeah. real name. Is that the, mm-hmm. the truth? Is that where the Virgil character spawned from? Is it from I Virgil Runnels? I don't... Hey, man, I didn't know where the character came from originally. And I didn't care. Okay, when you got a character to portray or a character to be... You be that character, and you be the best of your ability to be that character, okay? And by doing that, you don't care where it came from, okay? You got to do it your best, okay? And you got to make that character rock the world, and it rocked, you mean? And every time you you came and did a character, you do it better and better and better and better, where you're the top professional in your sport. That's where I look at it. And you were involved in a lot of main events. Obviously, Ted was in in a couple of main events. You were in there with, with Andre, you know, in their in their corner. Was that kind of a huge deal to you to be a part of like a SummerSlam main event and be in Ted's corner for WrestleMania and Andre's uh, corner and so on and so forth? Hey, I loved it. I loved it, man. I I was made to be main event. Okay, I was made to be. I was made to be in the number one actions where you're supposed to be like I love it bro I came up that way you mean so why not be in main events why not be 
the number one head knockers everywhere. You know what I'm talking about? To open mm-hmm. up the show or to close the show, okay? I like more clothes in the show when you come out and you sell out Wembley Stadium in London, England, or you sell out Madison Square Garden in New York, or you smell you sell out the Miami Arena in Miami, Florida, or you sell out New Orleans, the Superdome. That's what gets bigger than that. And obviously, you know, your feud, I mean, obviously with a lot, so many people remember you with the Million Dollar Man, Ted, Ted DiBiase, as his bodyguard, you know, they remember the money, the flaunting it, the throwing it, the putting it down people's throats. But I remember so fondly you, you know, you turning Royal Rumble 91, turning on DiBiase, nailing him with that Million Dollar belt, getting a huge pop. You just kind of relive that moment a little bit of the face turn that you had? Everyone has a price. For Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I love it because we, we built it up so good, man. So right. I mean, it was, man, it was a building of seven years, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that and turn of the Royal Rumble 91, the crowd remembers it so much. I mean, the million dollar belt and the feud over the million dollar belt, that was just such a great, memorable moment. I mean, I can't, I, I still today can go to New York and first team people run into me and say, hey, they come over to me, I can be eating in a restaurant in New York. No way. No, it, it can't be. Holy shit, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother, I still remember you 20 years later. Okay, that's 1991, okay? Okay, 20 years would have been Two thousand eleven. That's mm-hmm. twenty years, right? So right now yep. will be twenty six years to be exact. And they yep. still know it. They still know it. They still people still say, Man and even if right now, if these people are like, say thirty say thirty seven for example, okay? They watched this action when they were 10 years old. And they still remember now the 37, okay? Think of that little kid watching when he was 7, okay? Now that little kid, that kid is 33. And they loved it. And you, you, put, you put a long-lasting impression on someone like that that they remember, they never forget. And the first thing they do is tell their kids, right? Their kids say, oh, no, this was back when I was a kid watching it, okay? And their kids get, like, really, they want to see, like, what is, what's, what daddy or mommy talking about, okay? And they go back to the WWE Network, you know what I'm talking about? And they yes. pull up and watch it. Yeah. So that's why the network, the, the WWE Network, gets so many hits, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that golden era, I'm sure a ton of people watch yeah, that. They they want to watch the golden era of wrestling. Because that was the best golden era where you had WCW going at WWF. Okay? I mean, that was a strong thing. People used to record one show, record or watch the other show and record one show or record the other show and watch the other show. They may record WCW and watch WWF, WWF Raw Live or they may record WWF Raw and watch WCW Live. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Look how many times they came on a week. And the main thing, you didn't see no Saturday Night Live on television, did you? Can you answer that? Did you? Right. Or did you see Saturday Night Main Event on NBC? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we made a big impression on a lot of people's lives. Definitely. And, you know, it's funny. We, look, you said the network and stuff, and I remember just not too long ago looking back, WrestleMania 7, you beat DiBiase, you know, by a count out. But then you, we, SummerSlam 91, I love watching that show. You beat DiBiase for the million dollar belt. Was that one of the big key moments in your career, you think? Oh man, that, that, that was a big 
big pop. You, you, you did it in front of 29,810. That's Madison Square Garden sellout, okay? You did it the most lively city in the world, or just put in the United States. There's no city in the United States bigger bigger than New York City, okay? New York City, you got 29,810 with the Madison Square Garden hold. You got all these people doing talking, talking, talking. Within that one day, you went into households of uh, easy, okay, and then these people talk. Now you got up to 100 million people. You know what I'm talking? You see where I'm coming from? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We brought your, you we opened up your wings, and you watched it, didn't you? Oh, yeah, oh my God, yeah. That's, uh, you know, one of my favorite shows to go back to and watch it. I remember Roddy Piper as your mentor going crazy as well. That added to it as well. That was a lot of fun. Oh, the pipe, pipe was something else, man. He's such a good friend, man. He, he was such a great teacher. I mean, he was really a, a great, great person. Robbie Toombs, may God bless his soul, was one of the best guys in the world, man. Very, what is your current? Time. Oh yeah, what is your current standing with WWE? Because I think I saw you not too long ago backstage with the club, uh, Gallows and Anderson. Do you have a good current oh, yeah, standing no, with I, you know no, WWE? I, I, WWE I, had, I had to I had to go up to um, I think I was in Toronto, so I, I stopped on and they were doing some kind of a I don't know if it was a pay per view or a house show. It was up in Toronto, okay. So I stopped back in and, and I went and seen some of the boys, you know man. Mm-hmm. And I, I did. I, I seen Gallows and and the other gentlemen. Okay, yeah, they used to love watching me. Okay, so I, I told them they're doing, they're two, the two guys are doing a hell of a job. You mean? I just you know shook their hand and say, man, keep on, keep on with the keep on. You mean? Because they're doing a good job. <laughs> okay, you know who who's the world champion right now? Okay, John Cena. Okay, no, yep, no, John Cena. before, be, they wanted to John Cena beat for a belt. Who was that? Oh, AJ Styles? Okay, yeah, yeah. I've been, not, I've been doing AJ Styles for some years, you know what I mean? I told AJ he's doing a very good job, man. You know what I mean? Keep on rolling it, man. And what are your thoughts on a guy like John Cena? I think John is very good. He's very good, man. He likes, he's like the, the, Hulk Hogan of his ear, that ear they're in right now, okay? He's like the Hulkster of that ear, okay? Because I don't think no one can ever replace Hulk Hogan, you know what I mean? He just had that, he just had that, he just had that presence when he came, you know what I mean? He lit the whole arena up, okay? He lit the whole ring up. And when he went, he wrestled with a guy, he brought the best out that guy, the best ability out that person, you mean? He used to, used to shake that blonde hair, man, and do this thing, you mean? And they all rock with him, didn't they? Damn, he was, uh, he was definitely, I mean, for, for me and for Chad, I know he's definitely the best. But, you know, as we start to wind it down a bit here. Something I was very curious of, obviously, you know, you've been around the business for a very long time. I mean, over 30 years in the wrestling business, you've been obviously started out with off and the Samoans. You've been in Memphis, obviously WWF, WCW. Do you have a favorite match or maybe a couple of favorite matches? Would it be SummerSlam 91 or would it be something else? I think it would, it had to be 1991. SummerSlam. What can be? What can top that? There's nothing can top that. You know I mean? And uh, only thing can maybe come close to that is when we went in and we had opening day down in in WO land in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm. We went to the Georgia Dome, okay, and we presented the NWO to Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. And, they, and WCW went buck wild, didn't they? Insane. Or, or we had United States going buck wild. Which one? 
everyone, yeah. Hey, we loved it, man. And I love doing it. Like, if I had to go back, man, I'd do the same thing all over again, man. All over again. Do you have a favorite opponent in your career? I feel like you and DiBiase had great chemistry. It, would it be Ted or would it be maybe somebody else? Because I know you wrestled, obviously, uh, the Macho Man, Jake Roberts, Hercules. I mean, you had so many good opponents. Hulk himself, oh, man. obviously. Man, they, they were all great and great opponents. But I think the greatest opponent where I learned so much from was the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Hmm. Okay. And, um, he was a mentor. He was such a great teacher. And, man, he's, he was a real good friend, man. You mean? He showed you what the wrestling business was all about, man. Okay? Because when you're with someone almost like 24-7, okay, you keep your mouth shut and you learn, okay? You know, you see where I'm coming from? Yes. And, um, you learn from the best, and they didn't come no better than Ted DiBiase, man. They didn't come no better at all. He's obviously one of the best, and obviously one of the all-time greats. But I was also curious, what is your kind of relationship, or, or over the years, what has your relationship been like with Vince? With Vince, I guess I mean, it's still pretty cool. I mean, like, I guess it's still okay with Vince. You mean? I mean, Vince is continuing. He he got a whole. He got a big corporation he's running, man, you mean? And um I had I, I still like um it's called like a, a legends contract where you gotta be at like maybe WrestleMania or SummerSlam, you know, for the next like next I think next three years, you know what I'm talking about? And you have to show up there and and you know, you may have to show up at WrestleMania and you do a few meet and greets, you know what I'm talking about? So people, yes, definitely. Yep. You know, they still remember you, and they still love to see. You. And that's what people would like to talk about. They say, "Man, guess who's going to be at WrestleMania? Uh, which one is it? Like thirty-one or thirty-two? You know what I mean? They said, guess who's going to be at WrestleMania thirty-two or thirty-three? They said, guess who's going to be there? Uh, like they might be doing doing a meet and greet or doing an excess, you know, that type of thing. You know what I mean? And people love that. And they, and and their, their mother and father would say, oh, man, I watched that guy. When I, I'm, I'm taking my kids here. I'm going to go, go see him, okay? You see where I'm coming from? When you're good, you're good. And when you're good, you're even better. And when you're even better, you make it better. And when you make it better, it's just too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, Virgil. Well, this has been a lot of fun. And please, before we uh, before we wrap this up, share with uh, the listeners of the Two Man Power Trip where they can find anything and everything in the world of an icon, a guy who's really left his stamp on the business, the one and only Virgil. That's correct. Mm-hmm. And come and come see me on uh, the real the real Virgil. Come see me and come hear me. You'll love it because everyone got a price for me. <laughs> hey, Virgil, thank you very much. Hey, I just had a question for you. The, the GoFundMe, yeah. is that you with yeah. the, you know, the million-dollar belt? Yeah. Or, uh, you want to become the million-dollar man? Is that you? Yeah, it's me. What is that all my about? Agent. That's so funny. Oh, no, my agents, my agents made that. I got two agents up in Toronto. And they made that, you mean? So we give that out to, like, there are different different charities up there. You mean? Oh, okay. I'm a pretty smooth guy. I'm a pretty smooth guy. Right. I'm I'm down I'm down on the real side. You mean? So what kind of money do you get off of that? You, like you send it to like different different charities, like maybe make a wish and something like that. You know what I'm talking about? Mhm. Because when you do something good, something even comes back better for you. Hmm. Now is that you making up? Those awesome catchphrases, you know, like the, the, the fuck money and the meat sauce, and like, you know, you really like being uh, that the Olive Garden hustler and stuff I, like that. I, I go over, I go over a lot of them. I have uh, an agent up in Toronto, and he sends me, like, and I look at him and say, man, this is cool. This is good. Cool. All right. Cool. I've had Olive Garden today, man. And uh, a couple 
couple guys come to work and they say, holy shit, no way. Me sauce, me sauce mafia is here. <laughs> 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 so, you mean, you kick it, you mean? I mean, it's all like good, wholesome stuff, you mean? I can't wait to have a grand opening of an olive garden, you mean? <laughs> they may want to bring me into a grand, a grand opening. In this case, they may have one like in San Francisco or Chicago. Well, I'd love to see a grand opening of an Olive Garden in New York City, you mean? Or Miami. Mm. Or New Orleans. Or San Francisco. Or Hollywood, Hawaii, right? Well, Virgil, this has been uh, a ton of fun, and we appreciate, uh, you know, being able to sync up, uh, you know, and it's uh, it's been great. You know, you... Uh, you know, the the Mark side of us uh, definitely comes out when we talk to guys from uh, your era. Okay. Thank you very much, Matt.